Greetings fellow duelists and welcome to my druid starter deck and class overview for the wizard duels rotation. In this video I will go over recommended strategies and decks, cards you should include and other general strategies to improve your druid duels runs. Please keep in mind that all of these recommendations are based on my personal experience and do not represent a stat based approach. The reason for this is deck balance will shift over time with balance patches. The current druid hero, Forest Warden Omu, comes with a choice of three hero powers. Nature's Gifts. Choose one. Your hero gains plus two attack this turn, or spell damage plus two this turn. This goes well with the druid quest line, and two spell damage can yield spectacular results in some situations. Uh, invigorating Bloom. Reduce costs of cards in your hand that cost five or more by one. Unfortunately, this hero power has not been good in any decks yet. They always turn out gimmicky, slow and unreliable. If you are so inclined, you can still go for some survival of the fittest clown action. And finally we have Harvest Time. Destroy a minion, then summon two 2-2 two, two Treants for the minion's owner. This goes incredibly well with low cost death rattle minions and small token generators like Adorable Infestation. You can also use it to destroy enemy minions, but the downside of summoning 4 foreign stats for your enemy makes this only viable on extremely threatening cards or to get rid of a taunt so you can end the game. Apart from these 3 hero powers, Druid comes with an assortment of 6 signature treasures. First one is Warden's Insight. It's a 3 mana nature spell with choose 1. Refresh your mana crystals or summon a tree end for each mana crystal you have. This has many applications and is very powerful, except for on turn 3, don't use it there because you will either get, just get 3 treants which isn't great, or you do nothing. Most frequently it is used to generate giant boards for token druid, but it can also be used to gain up to 7 mana, to get a big swing turn, or to set up some sort of OTK. The second treasure is Moon Beast. It's a 4 mana 4-5 four, beast. With your Eclipse spells cost zero. These include Solar Eclipse and Lunar Eclipse. You can generate more with Kiri, Chosen of the Loon. But please don't. This thing is kind of pointless, since it starts out merely okay, and then gets worse as the run your deck gets bigger and your deck Eclipse density decreases. Do not pick this. The third treasure is Herding Horn. It's a 4 mana 0 3 weapon with. After you play a beast, summon a copy of it and lose 1 durability. This thing honestly seems pretty strong, especially with rushing beasts like Druid of the Plains and Pack Panther. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anyone make it work yet, but maybe you can! This unfortunately does not interact with Guardian Animals. The fourth treasure is Marvelous Mycelium. It is a 1 mana nature spell with discover a choose 1 card. Choose 1 cards have both effects combined until end of turn. Currently there is little use for this one and it gets outshined by other treasures. There might be a place for it in future expansions. The fifth treasure is this class's scaling treasure, Awakened Ancient. It's an 8 mana 812 taunt minion with battle cry. Draw one card, deal one damage and gain one armor. All of these effects increase by one for every two games you completed this run. For example, if you are 3-1, you have completed four games, and thus this guy will draw three cards, deal three damage and gain three armor. If you get deeper into your run, this tree turns into an ultimate ultimate infestation. This card is a bit too expensive and weak on early games because the one or two damage cannot remove much and it's super vulnerable to hard removal, especially Priest's Shadow at Void. If this guy was on, on a cheaper but smaller body like other scaling treasures, he would be much more usable. Also, other scaling treasures usually include a minor cheating aspect while this guy does not. If you reduce the drawn card's cost, this guy might work as well. As it is, it's merely decent if, even later in your run. The last treasure is Zukara the Wild, a 3 mana 3-5 three, minion with, after you play a spell that costs 4 or more, pass it again with random targets. 
This effect is honestly incredibly powerful. If you manage to stick her, a decisive armor up can just instantly end the game. There are a lot of applications for her in Druids, so get out there and try a few of them out. My favorites are Arbor Up, Best in Shell, and the brutal spell damage double swipe. She also synergizes with multiple spell treasure cards. Without stuff like Innovate or Lightning Bloom, you can only use her once the turn you play her though, so that's a kind of a limitation. You could of course also reduce her cost somehow. At this point I would go over cards that should be in all Druid decks, but the decks are quite diverse, thus the only card that kind of fits this bill is Nature Studies. Because it's great at banking mana for a more powerful turn, or just to fill out your curve. So let's talk decks separated by hero powers instead. Decks I suggest will not be taking passive treasures into account because they are constantly getting rebalanced and a bigger duels update is already in the works. Which might make all of the decks I propose irrelevant. Thus, I will look at the decks purely from the perspective of hero powers. The first hero power, Nature's Gifts, goes well with the Druid questline. It also allows for some spell damage shenanigans, but those are a bit more unreliable. Because of that, my recommended deck looks something like this. No matter how you decide to build this deck, always include Swipe and Solar Eclipse, because Swipe is incredibly powerful with your spell damage hero power, and Solar Eclipse can double down on that, and of course other spells. The code for this deck and the others I mentioned in this will be in the description. As signature treasures, you should use Warden's Insight, Awakened Ancient or Zukara the Wild for those sweet double bites and swipes, potentially with spell damage. Use your spells and hero power to complete your questline and gain a bunch of armor to stay alive. Then copy your guff repeatedly with Zola and Mark of the Spike Shell. If you don't have Zola, use a Nobleman instead. Nobleman is generally a good card but a bit more unreliable. Look for spell synergy treasures and keep in mind that double battle cry will make your guff hit for 16 damage. The second hero power, Invigorating Bloom, is incredibly underwhelming. It's far too slow and clunky for this mode and unfortunately I never managed to make a deck that feels good to play, so I will just pass here. The last deck using this hero power that got 12 wins that I could find online was back in July. Link to that in the description. The third hero power, Harvest Time is my favorite of the bunch. It is exclusively used in token druid decks, those however can go at least two different directions, probably more. One is a full death rattle route, the other focuses on nature spells. No matter how you build this deck, always include a Rubian Egg and Runic Egg for the sweet hero power synergy, as well as Savage Raw and Arbor Up as finishes. Here's a little look at the death rattle version that I prefer personally. You should use the Warden's inside treasure in this deck, but I have successfully run Awakened Ancient in the past. Sukara the Wild is usable in other versions of the deck that include Pride's Fury or Soul of the Forest. Druid is honestly one of my favorite duels classes and had some really crazy token druid runs in the past where I picked up multiple triple go the might tree buckets in a single run, sometimes making my treants permanent 6-6 minions or even bigger. Even if the class is on the weak side right now, because it's not that great at abusing battle cry strategies, there's a lot of fun to be had here. So I hope this little druid starter deck overview was helpful and enjoyable, and I wish you best of luck and a lot of fun in your future duels runs. Thank you for watching this video. I would highly appreciate if you could leave a like and tell me in the comments what class or other video you would like to see next. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, it's absolutely free! If you want to stay up to date on the progress of my future videos or just other general Hearthstone thoughts I have, check out my Twitter. Other than that, have a nice day!